Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. The two quilts behind me are part of what we call Home and Away. This is a pattern I designed a long time ago for my kids when they were little, for one quilt for home, one quilt for away. And this has been very popular with you, our customers. We did this a little while back with another Moda collection called Canning Day, and that sold out very quickly and we had requests to do the quilt again, and this time, maybe a quilt that would go well for boys and girls. So we've done that. This is called Animal Crackers. And as you can see, we've done a lot besides the two quilts. We've also done some pillows because we know when your little ones are at home, they'll probably have the standard size pillow. And then when they are away, they'll be using the travel size. So we've given you lots of fun options here with this collection. And of course, as you know, these are always in very limited supply. These collections are out for such a short period of time. So at the end of this video, we'll roll right into that previous video that we recorded where you'll be seeing the canning day quilts all of the information is still absolutely relevant so that if you do decide you want to make the quilt behind me, the two actually, um, in Animal Crackers, you can apply that same information and that'll be a great tool to assist you in making your Animal Crackers quilt. So stay tuned for the longer video there. Thanks for watching and hey, if you have a friend that hasn't found Shabby Fabrics yet, let them know about the great news. We have free tutorials for you day in and day out, always free to watch at your convenience, and of course, more on the way. So I hope you enjoy the full tutorial, and I'll see you on a future Shabby video. Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm gonna to show you a quilt that I designed almost a decade ago called Home and Away, and that was when my kids were much younger, and I wanted them to have a quilt both at home and one that they took in the car with them. I did not want them dragging uh, off their bed their main quilt off their toddler bed. So I thought, you know, maybe I could design a quilt where I use fabric where the leftovers from making the first quilt make a smaller one that's the away. So thus the name Home and Away. And that's the home version, of course, and the little one is away. It's perfect for a travel size when the little ones just want that kind of comfort. Now, this is called Canning Day by Moda. I thought this was the sweetest collection. We've done a couple projects with it. Of course, we have the home and away quilts. That's available as a kit. We also did the bibs. Those are quilt as you go. So fun. You know, if you've got a baby shower coming up, isn't it so nice to be able to um, have just a handmade gift and obviously this entire ensemble would be amazing for the mom to be to not only get the quilts but also the bibs and we did the scallop basket in this and of course all those little things that the, our babies need from you know just formula diapers bottles their favorite stuffed animal whatever it could be baby powder baby lotion shampoo it's nice to kind of have it all available so I'll put that aside for now, but we just had so much fun uh, with this collection, and it's a really versatile collection. They also had some other colorways within Canning Day, and we made another set of bibs. So if you prefer these colors, that's available as a kit as well. But again, the Home and Away is a paid pattern, so I'm just gonna be showing you some tips and techniques of how the blocks work in how you make the secondary uh, block unit. So we won't be going over the entire quilt because you're really just making certain elements again and again and again, but the precision of it and what I'm gonna show you will help those points come together perfectly so your quilt comes out just the way you're hoping. So we're gonna uh, be using several of the rulers, some tools and our spinning mat and you'll see why I'll be doing that. Um, of course, the measurements will be inside your home and away pattern. By the way, if these are not your favorite colors, maybe you want to use a different collection or maybe the special family you're making the quilt project for um, has different colors that they love, you can always pick up the home and away pattern and use whatever fabrics you want, of course. So the measurements will be inside the pattern and you will start off with uh, two squares. Now, as you can see, we used our peach color, 
our yellow and our green. We just felt like uh, having two peach units two yellow units in each block, kind of opposite, kind of led to a really cool looking design. Again, if you're using your own fabrics, you can do whatever you want. Starting off with two squares, right sides together. And I'll be starting off making this one right here. Just two of the same size. You'll want to draw either a line corner to corner. I'm gonna show you two options here. You can draw your line corner to corner. Let me grab a little bit of a bigger ruler. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you why I love this ruler. I grabbed this actually for a different purpose, but instead of drawing a line corner to corner and sewing a quarter inch on either side of that, this Fonz and Porter quarter inch seam marker is fantastic. There's two in the package. You get a shorter one and a longer one. What's nice about that is rather than drawing that straight line, sewing a quarter inch away from that line, pivoting and coming back, I can just do the yellow uh, line on that diagonal, draw. I'm just gonna spin that around real quick. And draw on the other side. And now I just sew on the lines. I love sewing on lines versus trying to find that quarter inch seam allowance away from a drawn line. So let's just pin that and we're going to sew that. I've got a 57D uh, quilt uh, presser foot on my machine and this is the uh, Bernina 770 quilters edition. So let's get started sewing directly on that line. I'm gonna increase my chances of success here with my glasses. <laughs> let's get started. If you have a needle down on your machine, go ahead and, and engage that so you can just pull that out and come back. Okay, so that's going to be your step one, is um, sewing that. Now, your next step here, I think I will be grabbing a larger ruler, is I want to put a ruler on here, and I want to just I want to cut uh, corner to corner. I, you know, I will just, because I'm looking at right here at this line and I'm running my quarter inch along it, I'll just scoot my, I'll just scoot my ruler along. Once I get here, I just slide that ruler up and corner to corner. Now normally, when we make half square triangles, we press usually to one side. In this instance, we're not going to do that. Rather, we're going to press our seams open. All right, and I've done that ahead of time with two other ones. I can just bring that out. So that's one of the first steps. Why we're doing that is it's just going to help our block lay flatter. There's a lot of fabric that's going to come together in these points. We want to begin right now by getting everything laying out nice and flat so that we don't have kind of a peak right here where everything comes together. So pressing is very important in this project. I want to emphasize that right now, that please adhere very carefully to the pressing instructions within the pattern so that the blocks lie as flat as possible, which is always desirable. All right, so right now we have two of our half square triangles with our seams pressed open. Our next step is also very important, and that's to square this up. And I'm gonna use my six and a half inch square off ruler from Creative Grid. Again, I love rulers that do an important mission and this one does that. And I love all of the guidance. I have so many ways to confirm my alignment because I have these nice diagonal um, lines that are very profound. So looking at my seam right here, I'm going to lay that black solid line on my ruler such that I'm right along that seam. 
And I like to square up on all four sides. So I recommend that rather than scooting that over into one section and you only square up on two sides, no. Square up on all four sides and this is an essential step. You can't skip this or the block won't come out correctly. So I'm gonna scoot that down just a touch, making sure my black line is over my seam allowance and that I'm going to have the opportunity to trim on all four sides. Now, why this spinning mat? I don't want to disturb the block once I begin cutting. I want the block to stay stationary and I pivot around it versus I make a cut or two and then I have to pick up my block and move it. That's when errors and, and inaccuracies um, as far as um, just the, the perfection of that, this specific square up can happen. And before I had my uh, ruler, my, excuse me, my spinning mat, um, which I, you know, before this was even invented, I would always find myself picking my block up um, and sometimes even, especially if it was a flannel, I'd pick it up and it would even begin to fray on the edge. So I think this just helps the block stay clean, um, reduce fraying because I'm touching it less. So let's trim up on this side. Notice I just don't have to touch that block and I'm just rotating. I'm not making any dangerous cuts. I'm certainly not cutting toward myself. I've certainly seen plenty of that happening when I'm either watching other videos on YouTube, maybe from other, other places that do videos, or I've seen it certainly a lot at quilt retreats where people are just doing all kinds of crazy cuts. You know, that's how you're gonna hurt yourself. So, all right, you have to square those blocks up. I'm gonna do another one real quick because that will be essential for us to move forward. You're going to be using those two squares that we sewed together and we're now trimming up will be that will be the two halves of that block, okay? So that's all ready to go. I love things that are squared up just because I love how it increases the accuracy of how it all clicks together in the end. Now inside the pattern here, I wanna point out how you, we have arrows here helping you know how to press. So this arrow here, the fact that they're pointing in both to, in opposite directions is letting you know press the seams open. All right, you will repeat that process, making a total of 24 of these units here, 12 of the green and 12 of the yellow, or if you're sewing from home, whatever fabrics you'll be using. You'll make that determination of what those substitutes fabrics might be. Now moving into our instructions, um, make sure that you're referring back to your pattern so that you're putting your next section onto this unit properly. It's important that the diagonal is running this direction and not like this when you put the next element on. All right, so we'll get our white. And whether you mark it now or mark it when it's on here doesn't really matter, but we're going to use this tool again. So I'll use the shorter one because I can. Our instructions has us drawing a line from here to here. Now I can use this now and just use the edge of it if I want to. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this ruler again for the next step. It's, I might as well, it's in my hand and it's what I'm gonna be sewing on or using shortly after I make this stitch. So you could, once you prepare all of your units like this and you trim them all up, you could go mark all of your lines and just chain stitch this. I'll go do just this one, of course. Actually, I'll just show you what that chain stitching would look like. You can just mark them all at the same time. Now, unlike how I used the ruler before, remember how I had the yellow diagonal to diagonal and I drew on other side? I'm using it differently this time. I'm just scooting it over and using it as a straight edge to mark corner to corner. So just keep that in mind, that that ruler, I'm using it just a little bit differently. Now if you want to put a pin in, 
I always like to do that, especially if I'm going to be chain stitching stuff. I just don't want things to be moving. All right, let's take that over here. We're going to be sewing on the line again. You know, chain stitching makes the process go so fast. Um, okay, I'm not going to unpin. That, that was my first instinct. Okay, time to unpin. Nope, we're not going to unpin. What's going to happen now, after you chain stitch all those together, trim them apart, is I'm going to use this super cool ruler tool, I should say. It's not really a, uh, it's not really a ruler because there's no measurements on it, but it's a tool. I now need to measure to the right of the line I just sewed on by a half an inch. While you could go grab a ruler, find the half an inch, you know, I'm now dealing with a pin here. I have to find that on my ruler. It's a little bit awkward and it doesn't lie flat. You're, you're kind of, you could unpin because it's now secured. So you could do that. Option one, take the pin out. That fabric is certainly not going anywhere now because you've stitched it down and you can draw a line there. That's option one. Or my favorite option is, since we've been using this ruler, remember how from the center of the yellow line over on either side is a quarter of an inch. That means collectively the width of this is half an inch. So per the pattern, we need to draw the line over by half an inch. What I love about that, I don't have to find anything on my ruler with using this ruler. I just simply lay this diagonal to diagonal, and I know that because the width of this is half an inch, it's just my straight edge. I don't have to be focusing and concentrating on finding that half inch measurement on my ruler. So this is such a cool tool to have. Anytime you're gonna make half square triangles, this is my absolute go-to. So let's go, let's go stitch those again. And again, chain stitch them all. All right, we'll cut these apart. Let's put that aside for now. Now we'll grab our four and a half by eight and a half inch ruler, any or any ruler where you can see a quarter inch away from our line, our first sewn line. You're basically going to cut the gap right there. I'm just going to put that one aside for now. That's for the little project. That's the away project. This is for the home project. And we'll cut this one. Let's get that iron going. Now, what I'm going to be showing you here is just, we're going to press this particular one to the outside, but following the pattern, your pressing for the white and the yellow is going to be different than that. So I want you to, I just want to highlight that so that you don't go make them all or press them all to the outside for all of the colors. Only for the peach colored one are we going to be pressing to the outside. You would repeat that process when you get there for your green and your yellow. And notice we show the arrows where you're pressing toward the color, okay? In fact, I've got one of those done where I press toward the color versus away from the color, okay? 
That's just going to help the seams nest so nicely. But I'm jumping ahead. Let's go back. So once you've done that on one side, you're going to bring your squares back. And we're going to repeat that process. Doing the very same thing. Again, I'm just going to use this. I'll use the small one again, where I'm scooting this over. I don't even have to have it on my square. I can just do this here, where it's diagonal to diagonal. I'm using this as a straight edge. One and two. I like to do, once I know a block has gone together correctly, I always make one block first. Because I don't want, if I make a mistake, I don't want all of my blocks to be wrong. But once I've confirmed I've got that right, I just go for production, where I'm going to mark everything all at the same time, stain, chain stitch everything all at the same time. It just makes it go faster. All right, just like we did before, right sides together, pin. Right sides together, pin. We're going to sew that. Then we come back, we mark again, and we sew again, and press to the outside, and we'll have two more of these little guys. Now, I've done that ahead of time just to save us some time, and that's what it looks like. Okay, so we, we have that. Let me get this out of the way for us. And, of course, you'd have two more of those that you're going to put off to the side because we're going to make the home quilt first, and we'll make the away one later. So now we've got two of these. We keep in mind that we press open for the center. That's everything. And for the ones that are peach colored, we press away, away from the color. For the ones that are green and yellow, this is where I pressed toward the color. Why is that important? We talked about those interlocking seams. Let me just move this out of our way right now. You know, pressing, I always used to think when I was, a, when I was early quilter, uh, pressing's not that big of a deal. You know what, it is. <laughs> it helps my blocks lay flatter. And it just looks so much more, um, looks better after it's quilted because I don't have these kind of rises and falls. It's just that kind of a, this nice, even plane. All right, so here's our, our block laying out. and We've got yellows and peaches. You'll be referring to your pattern, and you'll be laying out your peach, or your yellow, rather, here and here, and here and here. And because of the way that we pressed those seams, when you go to sew this together, notice how I have interlocking seams. I want the overhead camera to see that. How this is going this direction, and that seam is going that direction. And that just makes everything go together. It just clicks together. You're going to pin, pin, and those seams press open. So it's, oops. Got that on the opposite side, didn't I? Let that go. <laughs> I, I touched it once and already turned it upside down, didn't I? Isn't that funny how easy it is to get turned around? There we go. Like that. Right side together, right side together, quarter inch seam allowance, press the seams open. So you'll open those back up. And then it's just this row to this row. Quarter seam allowance, press the seam open, and you've got your block. So you've got one block, two blocks, and you just continue making those blocks, sewing them together. Inner border, outer border, that's your home quilt. The away quilt, again, has some important pressing instructions so that when you're putting your uh, squares, or your, these now will now be squares, again, you get those nice interlocking seams. So let's go look at Let's go look at this part. Back inside our pattern, it's going to let you know which direction. That's why it's hard to pick up the pattern on these tables sometimes. Let's go to the back a couple pages. 
And again, we're giving you arrows. Be sure you're paying attention to those arrows because that's going to help your block be lying much flatter. So here, they're letting us know, okay, on this one that has the dark, the dark peach, we're going to press toward that darker color. And on the one with the lighter peach, we're going to actually press toward the white. So I know I've, at times, oh, this is another one of the darker ones. Okay, well, we'll press to the dark. And then with our lighter peach ones, which I have some of those down here, we press toward the white. So this is what you'll have here, is the lighter peach is pressed toward the white, just like we show you in the pattern. And this one with the darker peach is pressed toward the dark. So I know I've pre-programmed you, always press to the dark. Forget that today. That's not happening because we want interlocking seams. Now the next step of making our little quilt, our away quilt, is squaring up. Now I've got a four and a half inch square up ruler, and I'm going to be squaring this up to just three. Just like I said before, and I'm going to get my little, I love my spinning mat for any time I square, it's like my go-to. Just put that nice strong diagonal line some, somewhere along, anywhere along here where I know that I'm going to be able to trim around all four sides. So you see how that's my three? I don't want to bump it up into that corner again where I don't get a chance to square up this side very much. I want to be able to square everything up perfectly. So press, give a good firm press on that. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a rise. Move that out of the way. Rotate, rotate. Now on this one, I need to move my ruler, right? So I just pick it up, and I know that those two sides were squared. So in that instance, I am right along my diagonal line. Actually, those two sides are squared. Those are the two. I'm like, why does that not work? These are the two that I squared up. So I'm sitting that perfectly on that line, perfectly on this line, and on my diagonal, which get now gives me the chance to square up this side and this side. So now this is perfectly squared up, and you repeat the process. In fact, we'll just do that real fast so you see in real time. I know some of our videos are longer than some of the other videos I see out in the quilting world on YouTube and, and whatnot. But you know, guys, I want you to see all the steps and how it happens because I don't want you to have questions or, you know, how did she do that? The whole point is you don't, we don't want you to guess. So I, th I appreciate you hanging in there for our longer videos. And then one last cut. All right. So I have had them both squared up, and we've been very careful to press our seams according to our pattern. So as we look at that quilt, we know that we have our darker orange here and our, in our uh, I guess I should call it peach, as I've been calling it. And we have our... peach like this. I'm just looking at that kind of that corner of the quilt right there. Notice how squaring it up, the points come perfectly together. And as I lay that right side together to sew, press that thing that kind of got laid over there. How those seams just lock in perfectly. I want to go, in fact, I want to go sew that. Let's just, I just want to show you how cool that just clicks together. Let's go sew that real quick. Oh, 
on this, um, on this, you'll definitely be pressing all seams open once you're sewing the units together like this. So you're evenly distributing that bulk. And just look at how beautiful everything is coming out. And you'll just continue making units like that, making sure that you're adhering to um, following all of those pressing instructions. So if you have been looking for a really fun project that has a lot of practical applications, maybe the home and away quilt is perfect for you. So as you've learned today, you can see that um, don't be intimidated by projects that have a lot of things coming together. You can see that with some careful processes and some really good square up tools and additional tools that even a beginner could be very successful in making the home and away projects. I appreciate your time today. I would love to get your feedback and be sure to subscribe. That way you're the first to know about new Shabby Fabrics videos. I'll see you soon.